so there's this uh, group that i've been facilitating and uh, lately i have noticed that a uh, lot of participants have been absent and they don't show up for the sessions and in this one session where all the participants had come uh, this other participant named john uh, got very upset with the group members and he said that uh, this erratic participation of the group members was really upsetting for him and he was uh, the lack of consistency was adding to a sense of lack of safety in the group and he felt that each time the group members dropped out and then came in it felt like the group was starting all over again and uh, he seemed to be like really really mad at everybody and as i was hearing him and paying attention to him i recognized that uh, i was fully with him in his upset and as a as a facilitator even i was desiring that participants are more regular and they're really respecting and honoring uh, the group time however at uh, one point in time he just switched and he got really angry at me and he said anisha i don't even know why am i raising all these issues because it is you who are supposed to be talking about all this you as a leader are just not doing your job and i'm really disappointed at you and uh, when he said that i saw myself uh, very calmly explaining to him and i said uh, that you know my philosophy as a facilitator is very different as a process group facilitator um, i don't see myself as the authority of the group i don't see myself as directing the group uh, my understanding of my job is slightly different than what you want me to do um and i i usually refrain from telling people what they should be doing now thankfully all of this happened towards the tail end of the session and we really didn't get time to process much so we ended the session at that note and after i hung up on that call i saw myself beginning to feel angry with this participant um i had this flashback of multiple instances when i have seen him and heard him say things that are very similar to this kind whereby he is indicating that i'm not a good enough facilitator and um i saw myself having so many judgments about him i saw myself um, criticizing him in my head i saw myself wanting to ask him that what do you really know about process work i'm a trained process facilitator and uh, you goddamn don't even respect me and that's so unfair and i know that i continued to make and build this enemy images about him how he as a white man doesn't respect a brown leader etc etc now thankfully it was pretty late in my night and i i went off to sleep so the next day when i got up in the morning the good night sleep had really done wonders for me and that my rage had gone and my system was far more relaxed and uh, i saw myself now feeling curious about what he had said this question popped in my mind that what if uh, there's any truth in what john was saying what if i'm really not doing my job and intellectually i had this dissonance because the intellectual part of me was saying well that is how process work is done and then there's this other educator part of me which said that what if you had to take leadership anisha and what if you you were supposed to direct this group and the moment i had that voice i saw how every part of my body was beginning to squirm I was noticing this tightening in my body, um, and I had some uh, some intense fear coming up for me, and also some some shame uh, because I recognized the truth of what John was saying. He was right. I think he has he had picked up something about me. There are parts of me that are very scared of taking up authority. There are parts of me that. that dread of telling people what they should do and what they should not do and i think this is linked to my childhood and my past experiences where in whenever as a girl child or as a woman when i've tried to assert my authority or i've tried to direct people what has come back my way is tons of criticism to even abuse and uh, i saw myself 
just beginning to feel this immense um, sadness as I look back at my life and I saw of what I have really become as a person. And I was able to suddenly make sense of why am I attracted to process work? Because when I'm doing this work, then I don't have to take leadership. I don't have to take authority. And, and the little girl in me can be safe, can hide behind the process. And that awareness um, really opened up my heart to this other person. And I saw myself wanting to really hear him more fully, wanting to understand what was going on for him. And with that openness, I, I met him in the next session. And I began by first acknowledging his anger and also sharing my own reflections of uh, what I had thought. And um, it was just fascinating how my own vulnerability evoked vulnerability in him. And he started sharing uh, his own childhood story. And he said that uh, he came from this um, background where his childhood environment was like, highly chaotic. There was a lot of fights at his home. And um, he, remembers he, he remembered his uh, childhood environment as predominantly chaotic. And he really didn't know whom to, whom to lean into. And it's only when he went to school that he started uh, feeling safer because there was this clear structure in school, there was a clear list of rules, there was a clear definition of what's right, what's wrong, what's expected. And he started finding safety in that. And he also understood, he also found for himself how he could perform and how he could get his own self-esteem. And from then on, he said that his go-to strategy for every group that he went to was structure and norms. Like he needed to know the structure of the group, the norms of the group in order to be able to feel safe and in order to make his time in the group meaningful. Now, the moment he said that, I could intuitively pick up that when he said what he did to me in the group, he was not calling me out. He wasn't wanting to shame me, but instead he was really wanting to call me in with all his heart because he was really wanting some potency there. He was wanting to lean in my presence and he wanted to know if this space was safe for him. And when I had that awareness, I just had tears um, of compassion flowing through my eyes because I just saw our shared humanity. And it was, it was beautiful that because by the end of the session, not just me and him, but almost every other partic participant in the group was wanting to support a sense of safety in the group. And they all were looking at what could each one do to bring more safety, more consistency in this learning space? And as I look back at this incident, I, I feel a sense of um, joy and happiness that I could connect with John. And at the same time, um, I have this deep uh, sadness uh, because I recognize that there have been so many instances in my life when I have not been able to shift my enemy image. There have been so many instances when I have had this rupture in my relationships and I've not been able to open my heart. And I've been, I've remained stuck with my enemy images. And um, as I'm sharing uh, this whole uh, instance with you all, I'm noticing I have this uh, desire in me to connect with you. And also this uh, curiosity that how do you deal with these kind of situations? What do you do when you have um, an enemy image, either about another participant in your group or a colleague at work? How, how are you able to work through the rupture that happens in our relationships on an ongoing basis?